What's going on, you guys? So about a day ago, I saw a tweet from the Grand Tactician. This one's concerning their release date. Now, if you guys are not familiar with the Grand Tactician, their upcoming game, this is War 1861-65. This game, I believe, will be become the best Civil War game ever made. Based on their gameplay, the interview I did with them, their screenshots, the development blog, this game is just like... It will blow your mind. It's, it's incredible. So, they... Based on this tweet, the game is going to be coming out in summer 2020. So let's look at this development blog and kind of dive into it. As 2019 draws to a close, it's time to take a look at where the Grand Tacticians of War 186165 stands. While a lot has been achieved so far, it will be possible to march the game as an inexperienced greenhorn to the field. We have decided to continue drilling in winter quarters to make sure the game is ready to face the odds. While the delay to summer 2020 may come as a disappointment to the troops in the field, there will be plenty to do while preparing for the decisive summer campaign. And this time, let's have a look at some of the remaining features in the game and the timeline to finish them. This will answer some of the questions raised by the community recently. So I know this game was originally planned, hopefully was kind of aimed for a 2019 release. I'm not that concerned about it. Like it's been pushed back to 2020, summer 2020. It, it, it's not like pissing me off or anything like that. And the reason being is I'd rather them push the game back knowing that, hey, look, we don't feel the game is ready to come out right now. We want to push in some finishing touches and then release. I don't want them to do what every other development studio, well, a lot of development studios do, being forced by the publisher to rush the game out so they can cash in. This developer is like, look, this is our baby. We're going to release it when we want to release it. So it's not going to be a crap fest when it releases. We want to release a beautiful product, not shit that you have to put together. So big props to the developer for that. From economy to politics, the economy concept of the game has been described already in recent blogs. Currently, we are finalizing the economy with government funding controls, the 19th century references. The economy was very different back then with most of the U.S. government funding to cover administration costs and military upkeep f coming from tariffs, excise taxes, loans, and land sales. In 1860, annual budget was a bit over $60 million, mustering a great armies and fleets of the Civil War. More money was needed. U.S. defense spending alone hitting its peak of nearly, wow. So that's what, $1,200,000,000 in 1865. That's a lot of shit. Wow. <laughs> this, of course, requires new ways of government funding. Here, politics comes in. In the game, player can steer the direction of the nation with policies. The policies will be divided into different categories, one being the economic branch. Here, player can choose to push for new means of collecting revenues, like the Revenue Act of 1862, introduced in the first federal income tax. So interesting. With, with this new policy in place, players have access to income tax control to increase the amount of tax. While more money is collected, this will affect the wealth of the population, which they use to set up new industries and to buy goods. While the collected Taxes and tariffs will not be sufficient to cover the cost of a prolonged war. Issuing bonds and borrowing money will allow keeping the wheels of war turning. With problems to cover the interest, credit ratings will slowly plummet and prices rise so a strong economy is needed to fight on. This is where the South kind of <laughs> doesn't do so well there. Player can also step back and let the AI auto-manage the economy, which is also a good thing. A lot of times, you know, you want to focus on the war aspect. Policies are also used to drive military innovations and reforms as well as expansion and diplomacy. By issuing government funding in form of subsidies from the collective revenue, players can influence the policymakers. Player can, for example, expand the pool of recruits by introducing conscription, inspire Western expansion, or improve relations with European powers, lying Western imports, or even the purchase of modern warships freedom of action. In Grand Tactician Campaign, you are free to use your strategy and design your own operations. Love that. As the AI will be doing to the same, it is highly unlikely your civil war will follow the war's historical path. I love that. It's sandbox. This is, of course, a problem for me, the game, and map designer. At the same time, we want historically accurate, detailed battlefields. On the other hand, the battles could happen where, in reality, they did not. Creating the historical battlefields and maps have already been discussed in previous log entry. These maps will be used in the campaign. We've added our own campaign map with tons of other information, so-called battlefield markers that control where the battlefields are located. So if two armies clash near Manassas, then the battle will take place on a historical battlefield. The maneuvering of the units according to the campaign map disposition is taken into account, so reinforcement and troop movement directions are assigned accordingly. We also added random map markers as well. These markers manage a number of set non-historic 
battlefields. Ooh, nice. These battlefields will also be manually created to allow the same level detail as the historic maps. These the sets are compiled according to terrain in different parts of the United States, so you will not get the same same randomly chosen map in Texas and Vermont. There is also an upside to not having procedural random maps, the level of detail in the maps, and the gameplay aspect. Even maps generated randomly for simple hex tape. Hex-based terrain engine, Steel Panthers is a prime example, tend to produce quite good maps, but also very bad ones. And while getting your campaign randomly produced, you are an impossible terrain to fight in would be fairly realistic. It would certainly kill some of the fun, especially if it, if it was the battle that would decide the fate of your nation. So, and while the initial release will see a certain ma number of battle maps available with the described mechanic in place, we later can uh, expand the number of maps and the size of randomly picked map sets. Basically, any later created map can e be easily integrated in the main campaign map, expanding the game as post-release development goes on. The timeline. We are driving on as plan previously to include all the main features by the end of the year with these implemented we will have an alpha version in our hands and we will start proper testing of the game engines to fix bugs and balance the gameplay while alpha testing is ongoing we will have time to polish the game including adding campaign cutscenes using lionheart's film works epic footage directed by the professional producer and director maddie i'm gonna massacre this name vicamo the beta sh version should be available around march and from there that we will march on to a summer 22 release 2020 release <laughs> we don't want to expand that further but before the end of the year we are planning on releasing more info and footage from the campaign gameplay so stay close to the nearest telegraph station to hear the news as they appear all right awesome so just basically going based on what i was just mentioning i'm very motivated i appreciate the developers putting you know quality versus you know money because you know they can release it right now make their money right now and just look we're just going to release now, get whatever money we can, and then we'll fix it up later, which a lot of games do, fall out, right? <laughs> so I appreciate that. I like that, you know, a couple of things that I did like here is that you can just have the AI manage the economy. So you can kind of go Vicky or not, you know, and what I mean by Vicky, Victoria 2. You know, you can do a Victoria 2 type of game where you can focus heavy on the economy, or you can just do like a heart to iron kind of thing, or you can just focus on the military, which I like that. Let's see what else. I feel this dev, dev blog kind of focuses more on this part right here, where they're actually going to make these battlefields, right? They're putting in a precious attention to detail to make sure that, you know, you're not going to get, you know, when you go to tactical combat, you're not going to get a shitty map where it's like half the map is hills and the other half is, you know, freaking water, you know, and you're like, all right, this, this kind of sucks. So... Appreciate that they're doing this because when this game comes out, and from what I see and what I you know hear about this game, it's going to be epic. It's going to be incredible. You're going to have a campaign version where you can manage the economy, you can manage the military, the politics, go in, you know, organize your army, the organization of your army, manage the commanders, division commanders, promote all that good stuff, and then go into the tactical aspect, right, and then just fight it out. Right, and the tactical aspect reminds me of Scourge of War kind of games, which is awesome. They are bringing a lot of realism to this game, a lot of immersion realism, and they're also saying, "All right, you know, we know that the economy was a critical factor in the Civil War. You can get into it, or you know, you could just have the AI do it. We're, you know, you could do a hands-off kind of thing, which." I love, man. This is going to be incredible. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this. You know, for those of you guys that are like, shit, this sucks. You know, it's not coming out now. Think about this. They're going to have beta in March, right? They might even have early access. There's even a thing right here. All right. We're not going for an early access. All right. <laughs> well, they're doing beta. So you might as well just go to the forums if you want to catch it early and just keep trying to hope for that beta. But Rest assured that it's better to wait for something that works, right, than get something early that doesn't, right? It's, it's kind of like buying a car, right? If if you go and buy this brand new car, right, that the manufacturer rushed and you get in the car and you're like, this is the car I've been waiting for all my life and you get it and it freaking breaks down a, a mile later, well, you know... <laughs> You waiting all your life for this car <laughs> turned out to be a shitty experience, a lemon, right? Versus, hey, look, I'm just going to wait a couple more months. The manufacturer wants to make sure this car is good. And then you start the car and, you know, you drive to Cali and 
the car just puts up with everything, goes through hail, goes through everything, and becomes the car of your dreams. So that's that's kind of the analogy I'm going to use. All right. Hope you guys enjoy this. I will catch you guys in the next one. See you then.